Hello, this is Brett Crenshaw from Archival Directions, and today we're going to cover my top five items at the African American Fine Art Auction at Swan Galleries in New York. It takes place on April 22nd, 2021. There are over 200 lots of really exquisite African American fine art of all medium, which are going to fetch record-breaking prices. So let's take a look at a few of them. The first painting to look at on my top five is an abstraction painting by Hale Woodruff. It's titled Primordial Landscape and it was painted in 1967. This painting is a great size for abstraction. It's 40 inches by 50 inches and Hale Woodruff was an artist that was inspired to paint many different medium. He painted landscape. He was a muralist and also dealt in abstraction. In fact, he was one of the founding members of the Spiral Group, uh, which was a, a collective of African-American artists who worked in that medium, which was not so common in the 60s at the time. Hale Woodruff was also an educator at NYU and Atlanta University. But this painting with beautiful washes of yellows, reds, and blues is part of his Celestial Gates series, which is also in Clark Atlanta University's Art Gallery, as well as the Museum of Modern Art. It's estimated at $120,000 to $180,000. I anticipate it's going to fetch a really decent price. The second work we'll cover is by Kara Walker an amazing visual artist who has worked famously in the medium of silhouette drawings. Uh, Carol Walker came into notoriety being the youngest recipient of the MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant. It was worthy. Her work is very controversial, is very thought provoking, beautifully executed and extremely daring. This piece, she tackles the subject, America's greatest president, perhaps, Abraham Lincoln, and positions him in a very controversial stance. This piece, which is a painting by Carol Walker, takes Lincoln far away from the historiography that we commonly see him through as the great emancipator. And it really places him as the great oppressor in that you can see here Abraham Lincoln is placing a shroud seemingly over the figure of a of a pregnant um, enslaved African now that's a controversial stance by any measure and executed here uh, with a really serious focus on Lincoln himself as the antagonizer as the anti-emancipator if you will and this piece is not small this is a, this piece is over five feet tall it's a very very daring and true to history rendition of an American icon similar to her controversial sugar related exhibition at the former Domino sugar factory in New York uh, and other pieces that she's done on the antebellum south this one it fits the bill. Um, it was valued at $35,000 to $50,000, and we'll see what this draws. The next piece to look at is from Nelson Stevens. Uh, he was a member of the awesome collective of uh, African American visual artists called Africobra, the African commune of bad, relevant artists. An amazing group of artists. He's one of the standout figure figures. They are known for creating the iconography of the Black Arts Movement. Um, these works, colorful, uh, usually full of messages, and definitely a look towards Africa and the heritage and history of African Americans, and putting a visual stamp on the spirit that grew out of the '60s. And this piece beautifully executed is titled Yes We Will. 
This piece is from 1972, and though we find some similarities between the style of some artists in Afrocobra, Jeff Donaldson, Wadsworth, and Jay Jarrell, um, Nelson Stevens executes it in a way that's particularly his own. Um, I would say look at the composition of his paintings, or really his mixed media um, paintings, um, and you'll see something particular about his style that I think is really beautiful. Um, this piece was uh, assessed at between $20,000 and $30,000, and I think it'll fetch a really good rate. Nelson Stevens was slated for retrospective at the University of Maryland Art Gallery. It was postponed because of the COVID quarantine. Hopefully we'll see more exhibitions and singular focus on this really important New York born artist. Next is a bronze sculpture by a very important artist, Richmond Barté. It's titled African Boy Dancing and this is the highest assessed piece in the auction. It was assessed at one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now, this artist, his career runs the span from the Harlem Renaissance through the sixties, and he was an influence to a lot of American sculptors. And one thing particular about his work, he looked towards dance. He looked to the figurature of dancers to express. Um, beauty and um, definition of the human form and in particular he looked at in black bodies and became famous at executing these beautiful works um, one of his most famous works which sold for more than a half a million dollars uh, is titled feral banga and just as beautiful as the work itself is uh, and just as intriguing as the work is in that it shows an African figure uh, swinging a sword, which is an intriguing figure to capture in sculpture. But just as important was uh, Richmond Barté's life and relationship to the art. The figure that he depicted in that piece, Feral Benga, was also a unique figure within the arts. I definitely invite you to look up the man known as Francois Ferrell Benga. You'll find a history of talent, beauty, and freedom. Freedom to express his artistic gift as a dancer in the same way that Richmond Barté expressed his talents as a sculptor. This piece was uh, assessed at $150,000 to $250,000. Let's see what it fetches this year. Barté's work has been high-priced items within the auction market for many years uh, and his reputation is well known so I think this is going to set a record this year let's see and the last work that we'll cover is a piece by uh, female artist Howardina Pendel this is from her oval memory series titled Rhinoceros Heaven Howardina Pendel is a very valuable visual artist. Uh, she was at the forefront of the feminist movement within the visual arts, both as an artist, also as an educator, also as a critic. She was involved in scathing exposés of the art world in regards to sexism and racism, things that she did as a scholar, as well as an artist, as well as an activist. She supported the work of other feminists like uh, the Guerrilla Girls and other actions like Pest, which some think she may have founded. Uh, this work, it's amazing. It's a mixed media work. It's collage. It's 3D. It also connects her work and her life to another famous female artist, uh, Frida Kahlo in that this work was related to Howardina Pendel's physical injury. Um, this memory series work is based on a terrible uh, car accident that uh, Howardina Pendel was involved in, which compromised her memory. And this art was produced as a way to exercise that. It's beautifully executed, mixed media piece. It's really exciting to look at. Um, 
and it was assessed at between $50,000 and $75,000. And as one of our living legends, um, I'm sure this piece is going to fetch a high price. So, I mean, this year we saw a lot of abstraction um, in the market. A lot of Afro-Cobra artists were represented. Uh, of course, we'll see the usual masters, Elizabeth Catlett, Charles White, Charles Alston. We'll see some beautiful Romare Bearden and Jacob Lawrence paintings, as well as more contemporary medium with Carrie Mae Weems. Valuation and selling prices have really been exciting. Uh, a lot of record-breaking record prices over the last five years. Even though we're in a pandemic and things are different now, uh, particularly because, well, you can't go to Swan Galleries to see the viewing. Uh, it changes the way that the auctions uh, occur a little bit. But nevertheless, the demand is there and the supply is there. So many amazing things coming to market. And so keep your eyes here. I will continue to bring you videos on the African-American material culture market, um, both fine art and others. We'll continue to talk about collecting and the field of history and education and interpretation, cultural tourism, and many other topics. This is Brett from Archival Directions, and I invite you to like, comment, and share. Hit me up on social media at ArcDirect, and I look forward to hearing from you. Be well.